In this video, we're going to generate a certificate signing request for Cisco VCS or Cisco Expressway in an MRA or clustered environment. To start, we're going to need to verify the DNS configuration, specifically the system hostname and domain name. Click on System and then click DNS. In the DNS page, we see the system hostname and the domain name, which together form a fully qualified domain name, or FQDN. This is the subject name used in the certificate signing request in order to sign the certificate. If your system is in a clustered environment, we will also need to verify the clustering information. Click on System and then Clustering. In the clustering page, we'll see the cluster name, which is an FQDN, and also the FQDN or IP address of each of the peers in the cluster. The TLS verification mode has two possible options, permissive and enforce. We're currently using the permissive mode, but once the certificate is generated, we could use the enforce mode if desired. Now that we've verified the DNS and clustering information, we can proceed to generate the CSR. Go to Maintenance, click Security, click on Server Certificate. And the Server Certificate page will see the Certificate Signing Request option. Click on Generate CSR. We'll see the common name showing the FQDN of the expressway, and below that, the alternative name parameters, which are ready to be filled. In this case, since the certificate will be used for MRA, we need to put the public domain into the certificate as a subject alternative name. In the CUCM registration domains field, we type the public domain name. In format, we have two possible options, DNS or Collab Edge DNS. The domain name will appear differently depending on your selection. Be aware that either format is acceptable. Collab Edge DNS will just prepend the domain name with Collab Edge. Note that when generating the certificate for the Expressway Core, the public domain does not need to be added to the certificate. For clustered systems, in the subject alternative names, we have two possible options. One for adding the cluster name as an alternative name, and one for adding the cluster name plus the DNS names of each peer in the cluster. In this case, we'll use a comma to separate each name. Once we type the alternative names and press tab, we'll see the additional names showing in the list of alternative names. Note that this process applies to both the Expressway Core and the Expressway Edge. Scroll down and we'll see the additional information fields that we need to fill out. We're going to use the default key length and digest algorithm. The rest of the information needs to be completed based on the location of the server. There are no special requirements for this information. Once these are filled out, click Generate CSR. You'll now get three options, Show Decoded, Show PEM, and Download. Click on Show Decoded and you'll get a new window. Scroll down to Subject Alternative Name and verify that the subject alternative names here are correct. Once you've verified that, close the window and then click Show PEM. Another window will open and we can see the CSR encoded in PEM format. You can close this window for now. Let's click Download and save the file. You can open the file in Notepad and you'll see the CSR details again in PEM format. This is the text that needs to be provided to the Certificate Authority signing the CSR, and the Certificate Authority will provide a server certificate file in return. Once the certificate is obtained from the Certificate Authority, we can upload the certificate on the same server certificate page. Since the certificate was generated locally, the private key does not need to be provided by the Certificate Authority. It's already on the Expressway server. When ready to install the certificate, click Browse, select the certificate, and click Upload Server Certificate Data. After that, you can reboot your Expressway and it'll come up with the new certificate. I hope this video helps and thank you for watching.